AMD has millions of dollars. I would hope so. <laughs> so uh, now to jump into some really good AMD news, actually. We a lot of times have AMD sections because they've been such a hot topic over the last two years or over a uh, yeah, year and a half. Uh, no, it has been two years, hasn't it? Wow. Uh, with high-performance computing. And so AMD is actually making a bold claim that their next-gen gaming GPUs will be competitive on the high end. Now, first question is, what do they mean by high end? Mm-hmm. Right? Do they mean, you know... 1080, 1070 Ti level performance, 2070 level performance, 2080 Ti performance. What do they mean by high end? So I'm going to guess uh-huh. 2080. I'm going to guess that as well. I think that's where the high end starts. And I think the 2070 is like the max of mid range. Yeah. If that makes sense. That's, of course, how we feel. They can define yeah. it however the heck they want. Pricing, if they want, it could be called the high end, right? The high end of pricing, 2070, could be included in that. Um, so anyway, though, th- this likely means that AMD and Lisa think Navi is going to be a big deal. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest, when Lisa and, and AMD as a whole said that Zen was going to be, they were right. <laughs> so yeah. I feel like it's there is some credibility that can be pulled from that. Of course, there's... Uh, how good it's going to be is is complicated and what competitive means is also another term that has to be defined since competitive could mean competitive price wise price to performance wise right um now the, the the direct quote here is uh from lisa sue is we will be competitive in high end graphics. We're making high performing quality products and building a solid long term foundation. Uh, and there was some other talk that made it very obvious this was about gaming specifically. Uh, now, Navi's supposed to be on 7 nanometer, which, if Navi comes out next year, very likely puts them ahead of anything that NVIDIA is going to be releasing in terms of process uh, technology, because mm-hmm. uh, NVIDIA is still on 12 nanometer, which is really basically just modified 14 nanometer. Um, so 7 nanometer could be what puts uh, AMD ahead of NVIDIA because if their architecture design is good enough and it's been silicon problems that haven't been, then that right there is what can give them a big advantage. Mm-hmm. Um, now, of course, that begs the question what happens when NVIDIA goes to 7 nanometer, right? But uh, Vega was a good architecture and it was just hot and power hungry. But they're, it kind of proved their engineers know what they're doing and uh seven nanometer could help with the two big problems of hot and power hungry yeah so that right there could be a pretty big deal uh i think this is a viable thing considering Mm -hmm. what amd has been doing i hope it's true because i think we need competition on the high end and the mid-range and the low end we need Mm -hmm. competition along the whole product stack and there hasn't been competition on the high end for a long time there's been competition on the upper mid-range and below uh and especially really good competition i'd say in the like direct mid-range which is the best area to have that but it's also the easiest area to have Mm -hmm. that so um so that was that was cool and speaking of amd gpus specifically there's a german editor that confirmed that there is an rx 590 running on 12 nanometer uh polaris 30 gpu so this isn't big news it's something we kind of knew but um uh his name's andreas schilling i don't know if that's how you pronounce the name might be yeah i think so i I would assume uh he posted photos like of the actual box for the 590 so that this is a confirmation this isn't just like a claim or a rumor uh and he posted photos that cur- that confirmed the 590 and also confirmed uh the 12 nanometer because it says finfet 12 on it and uh, he also doesn't believe he's under an embargo of any sort like he's not so that's why he was willing to release this um 300 price tag and it could be a good competitor to nvidia's mid-range stuff such as a 1070 mm-hmm. we'll see i would love to see that like let's say uh, maybe I, it'll compete uh, with the the fifth version of the 1060. Maybe, maybe. Okay, so the, there there is. Uh, <laughs> so we already have the like the RX 580 and stuff, right? And then we have Vega. Vega 56 is a very competitive against 1070 mm-hmm. and quite competitive against 1070 Ti. Uh, and so I would hope that if this is in that realm, that this is maybe actually beating Vega. But That'd Polaris, Polaris was arguably a better architecture mm-hmm. from a design standpoint. Um, so it would make sense that they could maybe use that to surpass things, yep. right? So uh, that's understandable. I feel like Vega um, leaned into the compute 
a lot more. A lot more than was necessary. Like, like almost like they shouldn't have done gaming with it, right? Yeah. Uh, but more like, like I think it's great also for like professional type things in terms of like uh, Apple using mm-hmm. it in their MacBook Pro and, and stuff like that. I think is is great, a great use for Vega, especially because when Vega is underclocked, it's actually quite competitive in terms yeah. of power efficiency and performance. But for high performance gaming, it just wasn't. Something that exciting? Yeah. You know? Uh, and that's fine. That happens. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, speaking, speaking of, of a fi- bunch of 1060s... Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> we talked about this last week some, but... Uh, We've AMD, got some new confirmations, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, it was... This is this is a disappointment from them. I... Yeah, so we pretty much got confirmation that the whole 580 with the same amount of cores that puts it on par with the 570... Literally a 570 with a 580 brand on it. Yeah. Um, oh, and a 40 megahertz overclock. You can't forget that. That ooh. potentially one extra frame you'll get out of it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's pretty much confirmed. We had an actual board partner from China confirm that they have that product coming out soon. Unfortunate. Um, it sounds like it's a It was XFX, right? Yeah. yeah. It sounds like yeah. it's going to be a primarily Chinese product, which for some reason has led people to defend this by saying, well, it's in China. Well, I think the idea behind that... I want to know, I actually should look into this more. I don't know what the 570 is like in China. Mm -hmm. Maybe the 570, maybe this is a bigger gap than we thought. Maybe it's still the same amount of cores, but like a huge gap in terms of RAM and clock speed and other things like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I'd have to know more about the details of the 570 in China. But uh, still, I don't really like this. And if this comes to America, that's really bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't like... Like like that Reddit comment you showed me is it was a genuine mistake because AMD is just so used to rebranding stuff they just forgot that it was the same chip yeah because <laughs> I don't like AMD doing this and and I I don't know what I hate more rebranding crap as better than it is or coming out with something great and then coming out with something with the same name that's crap which yeah. Nvidia does right where it's like oh well this one has slower RAM and this one has different RAM and this one has so less cores the slower RAM. <laughs> is absolutely BS when it comes to less RAM, at least that's more I, I feel like that is more easily visible to a consumer. It is. Less cores, which also has been done by NVIDIA, yes. is a crappy, crappy thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also if it's a significant clock speed difference, that's yeah. also crappy. Like so with, it's like with how ugh. well AMD has been doing and with how well liked AMD has been, Why they should they be doing this? things to ensure that the public image as far as them as a company is great because that's only going to do good for them. It is. and Trying to mislead like this is just going to piss people off. It is. I really hope that there is a good reason for this. I don't think there is, but I really hope that they have a reason for it. I could see this. there being a really good reason for this is if somehow it was performance-wise on par with a 580, just somehow with less cores. But since it's only a 40 megahertz overclock, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So what I will say, okay, the other acceptable thing would be uh, if the 570 in China is more different than I think it is. Then they should be calling it something different. I think so, yeah. Uh, 75, Something like that, yeah. And so like I think Lisa needs to pay closer attention to this kind of stuff mm. because this is the kind of stuff that makes people mad i mean rebranding a 480 as a 580 is one thing especially because you do you know you you double the vram and you add uh substantially higher clock speeds and you refine the process so that's easier to overclock uses less power all that stuff that's a a refresh is different than a complete rebrand right and amd has done a lot of refreshes they've also done a lot uh, of they've also re-brands. done brands i'd say they've done a decent amount of rebrands i wouldn't say a lot there's been a lot of the lineups have been refreshes where they do make significant improvements. I still don't like it. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. But um, but this kind of stuff is taking it too far. Just like the uh, GT1030 with DDR4. Yeah. It's taking it too far. And I don't like them doing this. And I just almost wonder, is this just a joke between uh, Lisa and Jensen since they're related? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're just like, let's see who can like troll the market the best. Yeah. And so like Jensen's like, we're going to slap DDR4 on this 1030. It's going to be like half the performance. <laughs> Everybody's going to yell. And then Lisa's like, we're going to brand this one the next level up. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I think that what they should do is they should just have a big family get together. And then these two should just sit down and be like, you should do this, and you should do this, and it's both really dumb things, and they should both do it. I think it would be it would be great. It'd Let be great. each other pick stupid. Or they could do it at the, the same time to be a joke. Do it at the same time, like the same move, but their product stack at the same time. AMD should release 
a 1080 and a international <laughs> release of 580. So it'd be an RX 1080 and a GTX 580. That would be so. That would be hilarious. Or another thing that they could do that would be an obvious troll at if it was at the same time mm-hmm. was like AMD releases another 580 and Nvidia releases another 1080, both with half the cores of the actual <laughs> one, <laughs> but with the exact same name, and they do it at the same time. Yeah. Can you imagine how mad Steve from Gamers Nexus would be? <laughs> He's already mad enough about this. That kind of stuff. Oh, you man, just yeah. want to hit something. Yeah. Or. Uh, Rather than a monolithic die of a bunch of small cores, what if they just had a really big core? I don't know if that's how that works, Daniel. <laughs> a lot of transistors in one big core. You get amazing single-threaded performance. Yeah, but that's GPUs don't work that way. You'd have to I do it with care. CPUs. No. No. (laughs) So on a good note, again from AMD, uh, is they have partnered with Cray, uh, Cray Inc., to make a supercomputer. It's very Cray, uh, using their Epic platform. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, uh, Cray is is huge in the supercomputer Mm -hmm. market. They've done a lot of amazing stuff. Uh, They've uh, they've worked with huge companies out there. And this supercomputer called Shasta is going to be using stuff from lots of vendors, including Intel and stuff too. Intel, um, ARM, NVIDIA, AMD, both in processors and graphics. I think Epic is the biggest portion of the cost and the money and all that. And also though, um, Shasta is going to be a product line. Right. Whereas yeah. the specific computer in question is being sold for the Department of Energy. Which is awesome. Which is using Epic. Which is using Epic and should be using Epic uh, because they are actually more power efficient. So It's pretty epic. It's pretty epic. So it's a $146 million supercomputer for the Department of Energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, very impressive. It's one of the largest in terms of, of monetary value in Cray's history. They've had one or two, I think, bigger than it. Uh, in terms of money. So that's a, that's a lot of money being thrown at a supercomputer. Of course, this isn't on, you know, the scale of uh, some of the stuff that, like, uh, China's done with the Milky Way and whatnot. Uh, I think that's the proper nickname for it. Um, but still, very exciting. I'm happy to see this. I'm happy to see Epic being in, in more systems and, and being more popular. It's, it's great. Yeah. It's super great. Yeah.